like horrible nightmare that I would so love to wake up from. The family of a man killed last week in a bizarre crime is remembering their loved one tonight. Now at nine, how they're processing the seemingly random violence that took a father from his nine-year-old son. I was covered in glass. My entire car was covered in glass. If I wasn't wearing glasses, it would have gone in my eyes. A Utah driver just inches away from having their life changed forever after a frightening incident on I-215 today. What Utah Highway Patrol troopers want you to know to avoid tragedy on the roads. Tracking strong storms here across Utah as floods, fires, and heat are all dangers. How you can stay safe. We start Fox 13 News at 9 with breaking news tonight of a scare at Salt Lake City International Airport this evening. Airport officials confirm that a small single engine FedEx plane went off the runway upon landing just before 7 p.m. We're told commercial flights were not affected by this incident. The pilot, who was the only person on board, was not hurt. The NTSB is investigating what caused this crash to happen. We are working to continue to gather more details, and we will, of course, keep you updated as we learn more. New tonight, the second victim in a Utah man's mission to, quote, purge the city is now dead. The 23-year-old Ogden man was attacked a day after a man in Spanish Fork was murdered. Fox 13 News reporter Emily Tenser spoke to that man's family as they process these random killings. Um, Pages of pictures and memories. Let's see, let's see good picture. Is all nine-year-old Ryston has left of his dad, Ryan Hooley. He loved the water, whether it was swimming or fishing. I was going to go swimming with him, but then, you know. Uli was the first victim in a murder spree over the weekend where 28-year-old Christian Taele allegedly told Ogden police that a, quote, higher power directed him to purge the city. It's like horrible nightmare that I would so love to wake up from. It was by this dumpster near 1200 North 400 East where Spanish Fork police say Huli was beaten and stabbed to death Friday. The attack completely random. We feel like we're living like a true crime show and we can't change the channel. Police say Ty LA traveled over 80 miles from Spanish Fork to Ogden for another seemingly random attack Saturday. He allegedly hung a 23 year old man in an apartment gym. There's always going to be the why, you know, what if. Ryan's family remembers him as a caring, goofy, harmless guy. Would give anything to see anybody, including his family, just be happy. He was a great person, and I loved him. A person determined to turn his life around if it hadn't been taken too soon. He had amends to make, and I know deep in my heart that he would have been able to make those amends. To say the I'm sorry's and the I love you's and all of those things. And someone took that from him, took him from us. Reporting in Spanish Fork, Emily Tenser, Fox 13 News, Utah. A GoFundMe has been created to help Ryan Hooley's family cover funeral expenses. You can find a link to that on our website, fox13now.com. Now, as for the suspect, Christian Taeli, he entered a not guilty plea in court today. Court documents include a letter from his sister saying she will support any sentence from the judge, but would like mental illness treatments to go along with any punishment. New at 9, some encouraging news from the Halfway Hill Fire. Evacuations for residents of the Virginia Hills subdivision in Fillmore have been lifted. It's been almost a week since that fire sparked. So far, it's burned nearly 12,000 acres. It's 10% contained tonight. Wow, check out this video. It certainly has been an active weather day throughout much of the state. Utah Department of Transportation spokesman John Gleason captured this dust storm happening at a youth football practice tonight in South Jordan City Park right around 715 this evening. Take a look at everyone. They don't know quite what's happening or what to just do. Just glad everyone stayed grounded sure. here. It's uh, rained in many neighborhoods this evening as well. So much so that there are areas at risk for flash flooding. We talked about the Jacob City fire over the last few hours that was not only burning, but now is considered a burn scar in many places. So 
That's one area of concern, Alan. Yes, flash flood warning there tonight. We had an aerial flood advisory for the middle of the Salt Lake Valley this evening, and we just got this picture posted into our Facebook group, Utah's Weather Authority. Mike posted this. Absolutely stunning. So you can see the Mattis clouds right here, uh, typically associated with some thunderstorms, some Dangerous storms that we saw today here across the state. We still have near Stockton that flash flood warning till 945. Our thunderstorms have moved up towards the Wasatch back Heber through Park City. All kinds of lightning along I-80 up towards Evanston. So just at the Wyoming border, we look out into Tooele County. We still have some thunderstorms off to our west. So we're not done with the rain yet tonight and we still have some breezy conditions. Leighton to Ogden right now that wind is about 40 to 45 miles per hour and we're really gusty in the southwest end of the Salt Lake Valley. We had some flash flood warnings across southern Utah earlier today as well plus we continue with some fire warnings through midnight. I'll let you know what you can expect through the rest of the evening and how long this dangerous heat will last. Allison, thank you. Well, this is incredible. A typical drive to work almost turned deadly for one Utah woman today. A big piece of metal flew off another vehicle and right into her windshield, Brian. Fox 13 News reporter Jenna Bree joins us live now from near I-215 to tell us more about this frightening incident. Jenna, good evening. Good evening, Brian and Kelly. Driving our cars is the most dangerous thing many of us do on a daily basis, but we don't really think about that every time we get behind the wheel. Now, after a near-death experience, this woman is begging drivers to secure their loads before they hit the roads. I'm just a regular person going to work when I'm almost killed. Annette Beavis was driving to work at noon today, like she does every day, when suddenly... Okay. I saw this giant metal bar coming right at me. It was, it was terrifying. It was going so fast, it didn't bounce off the ground. I only had like a second to react. It, it, it did a couple flips. Honestly, it was like a giant like ninja star. It was terrifying. Immediately swerving to the side of the highway, she sat in shock while she called 911, her ear dripping blood. I was covered in glass. My entire car was covered in glass. If I wasn't wearing glasses, it would have gone in my eyes. From washing machines to couches, Utah Highway Patrol is finding all kinds of road debris lately. Debris calls, I've definitely noticed more, um, but I'm not sure if there really are more. Maybe it's just happening when I'm working. Trooper Cody Olau is warning drivers okay. you can be fined just for having an unsecured load. And on top of that, you can be held liable for damaging other people's cars, too. To make sure things are, are strapped down. Um, just a couple weeks ago, I saw some people going up Redwood Road, um, and they had their arms out the window and they're just holding the mattress on the top of their car and that's that's not acceptable at all. Beavis was driving alone when the metal bar came crashing through her windshield. She didn't even see where it came from but she's grateful in that moment she had her eyes on the road ahead of her and reacted fast. I could have died you know my life was in their hands. And this really goes to show why Utah Highway Patrol is begging people to secure those loads, no matter what you might be moving. And UHP is also hoping this serves as a reminder for people, don't drive distracted. Put the phone down. It really did save someone's life today. Reporting live in Midvale, Jenna Bree, Fox 13 News, Utah. Now it makes you think about the next time you drive on the freeway. Glad she's okay. New this hour, the man who police say ran over and killed his wife at Salt Lake City International Airport earlier this year has pleaded guilty. It was back in April when 38-year-old Sean Christopher Sturgeon ran over his wife, Charlotte Sturgeon, with the family's UV, SUV, after getting into an argument there at the airport. Now, the couple and their young child had just gotten back from vacation. Sturgeon's blood alcohol level was three times over the legal limit at the time. Sturgeon's sentencing is scheduled for September. Now to an update on the case against Nicholas Rossi. He's a man living in Scotland who was charged with rape in Utah County earlier this year, who had believed to, fake to have faked his own death in 2020. Now the Salt Lake County District Attorney has charged Rossi with rape as well. Documents released by the DA's office claim the rape happened in 2008, which is when the Utah County case allegedly took place. A no bail warrant for Rossi's arrest has been issued. Authorities are now working together to extradite Rossi from Scotland to try this case. 
Salt Lake City School Superintendent, uh, District Superintendent, rather, Timothy Gadsden III has been placed on administrative leave and asked to resign. Now, we first told you about this last night. According to the school district, Gadsden has been the subject of multiple complaints ranging from inappropriate travel to favoritism to inappropriate workplace behavior. Fox 13 News reached out to Ethics Studies Associate Professor Annie Fukushima for comment. What it says to the community is that when we um, invite diversity into our leadership is that there is still a struggle to keep them retained in those positions um, and that it is our responsibility, not the individual's responsibility to create environments in which they can work effectively. In defense of Gadsden, last month, the head of Utah's chapter of the NAACP asked the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice to launch an investigation into alleged discrimination and harassment by the Salt Lake City School Board. Lots more to get to tonight on Fox 13 News at 9. Coming up, several popular spots across the state are dealing with harmful algal blooms. We'll show you where, plus a look at how crews are testing the waters. The area around Kanab is a beautiful place to visit. We love our visitors. But now the Kane County Office of Tourism is asking the public to be nice to the area. Why? Straight ahead. Kane County and Kanab are popular tourist spots here in Utah. Well, now they're asking visitors to not only enjoy the area, but to be kind to it as well. It makes perfect sense, of course, of course, doesn't it? Fox 13 News reporter Spencer Joseph spoke with people in the area today about what they're asking visitors to do. But we love our visitors. It's a special place for Utah. Because we get people from all over the world that come here and they share their culture and their perspective with us. And so it's kind of unusual for such a remote and rural area to be so exposed to the world. Kane County and Kanab are amazing experiences for all that visit. Whether it's the Wasatch Front or Southern California. But because of a few bad apples, they're putting out the message to be kind to Kanab. We don't want to have tourism at the expense of the local quality of life. The campaign is split into three sections, the people, the land, and the experience. All of this stems from an influx of people from the pandemic. And a lot of them we realized we're new to the outdoors and so we realized there's a lot of opportunity for education and, and now we're tackling that. As for the people. Be more patient when you're going out to eat or in businesses. We're short staffed like it seems like the rest of the world is. So just be a little bit mindful of that and be patient because we're just happy that people are showing up to work. <laughs> but outside, as you adventure, it's about being kind to our natural wonders, too. There's something in our human DNA. We're wired to etch our initials or our name in rocks and trees. I don't know why that is. <laughs> so we're trying to discourage that. Like, now we have selfies, we have cameras. They didn't have that back in the day, you know? We have our cameras, so that should be the proof of your visit to the area. So that everyone can have that experience of this Utah gem for years to come. Do a net positive, you know, to where instead of just hauling out your own trash, if you see trash, pick it up. Spencer Joseph. I think it really comes down to sustainability for the land and sustainability for the communities. Fox 13 News. It's really taken generations of effort and kind of fighting to keep it the, the way it is. Utah. Mm, gorgeous part of the state. It is that time of year again. Utah's Department of Environmental Quality is warning of harmful algal blooms at a number of spots, including East Canyon, Manaway, Otter Creek, Schofield, Lincoln Marina, and Provo Bay. Harmful algal blooms can make you sick if you come in contact with it. Please check with state parks if you are headed out to visit any of those water bodies to know the current conditions. Utah DEQ's Division of Water had technicians out today testing some of those popular spots where people recreate, such as Jordanelle Reservoir. While there's nothing visually showing in Jordanelle that implies any harmful blooms or pathogens right now, they're still testing for them, and they've already started to see an impact on our water bodies this time of year. This weekend, things have really exploded. We're seeing a lot more detections and concerning areas around the state. The hotter weather, drier temps, conditions are really becoming right for harmful algal blooms to happen. The blooms produce cyanotoxins, which pose serious risks to humans, 
pets, livestock. If you see some of these blooms, which might look like some scummy green or blue green water, you can always report it to the DEQ's 24 hour hotline. That number is the one you see on your screen. It's 801 536 4123. And while it's hot out there, thunderstorms and rain have been having some impacts on the roads tonight. It's a live look at I-215 on the east side belt where Mill Creek City said that they are flooding under the 33rd South overpass. So the northbound lanes have been stopped right there. It looks like traffic is starting to move through. So Mill Creek City is asking people to avoid this area if you can. And as many of you know, that's a trouble spot whenever we start seeing some heavy rain, even with areas of heavy snow, that east side belt has been really tough with all of the construction. So going to be a good idea to avoid that tonight if you can. And look at this picture from Eric posted into our Facebook group. Isn't this absolutely incredible? Wow, this is right before the rain started in his area this afternoon. We had an aerial flood advisory through the middle of the Salt Lake Valley that was allowed to expire at 830. We had a double rainbow downtown Salt Lake City from Victoria. And our temperatures are still really hot out there. So it's 86 in Ogden right now, 81 for Salt Lake, 75 for Provo. St. George, you are at 99 degrees right now. So it's hot across the state, and we still have thunderstorms off to our west right now, moving through the Dugway area, approaching there. And then the thunderstorm that we had across the Salt Lake Valley earlier, that is now up in the Wasatch back. Park City, it's already moved through for the most part. Now moving through Heber, Highway 40, and then up into the U.N. as tons of lightning. That's a concern with these storms, that some lightning from these storms could be sparking some of their own wildfires. We also have a flash flood warning for the Stockton area for that, that recent burn scar and Jacob City fire, which is still burning. So we are still going to continue with fire concerns across the state with even some natural sparks and starts as a possibility with our current setup. So into southern Utah down towards Panguitch, some lightning there and then along I-15 areas of rain near the I-70 and I-15 junction. Come tomorrow, we have chances for thunderstorms across the entire state. 10 o'clock tonight will be still a little bit breezy for the Wasatch Front. Ogden at 10 p.m. expected to be about 40 miles per hour. Then you'll calm down mostly overnight, about 15 miles per hour when you wake up in Salt Lake. And then another breezy day here across the region tomorrow. So you'll want to get out early. We still have the heat warning in place tomorrow. So it'll be around 75 to 80 for overnight temps for Salt Lake, Provo, Tooele, and Ogden. Then tomorrow afternoon, we have more thunderstorms here across the region and another hot day ahead of us. For Ogden, your chance of precipitation over the next week will be best Thursday, Friday, and again Monday. So you're gonna keep that chance for some rain on and off for much of the state. For St. George, you're near 105 to 110 for your entire seven day forecast overnight temps in the 80s. Here in Salt Lake, we're near 100 to 105 for the next week. We'll break this down for you in your super seven day forecast, including your air quality forecast, and also your UV index and how you can stay safe the next few days. It's Bill is a non-stop flight between Salt Lake City and Frankfurt. So why has it been diverting to Canada? Plus, new details on the three-digit 988 suicide prevention and mental health hotline, when it will finally launch, and the Utah connection behind it all. They have the power to step in and say, well, you're advertising a flight, but you're not operating it the way you're advertising it. It was billed as a nonstop flight from Salt Lake City to Frankfurt, Germany, but planes on the route are occasionally stopping along the way. One passenger who missed his connection says he was without his luggage for days. Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle spoke to a consumer advocate who told him where complaints should land. We're excited to have our partners at Eurowings Discover landing here just a little while ago. Lots of fanfare arrived in May with the first Eurowings Discover flight to Frankfurt. Uh, from this area, I have direct access to the heart of Europe. Giving Salt Lake City International Airport just its fourth European destination. Beyond Frankfurt, into Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. We all made it to Bergen, none of us with any luggage. All check and carry on luggage is subject to search. 
The itinerary changed for Dale Blair and his wife. We booked this cruise uh, maybe three or four months ago. The Kaysville couple were supposed to fly Friday from Salt Lake City to Frankfurt to Copenhagen to Bergen, Norway. Instead, the Airbus A330-300 diverted to Halifax, Nova Scotia. And there was no way we could make the connection. There's no way we could um, get our bags rerouted. The aircraft tracking website Flight Radar 24 says the Frankfurt plane diverted to Halifax for the first time on June 18th. Then it diverted there again all three times the route was scheduled for last week. Eurowings Discover is the division of Lufthansa. Its spokespeople declined an on-camera interview request, but said in an email, the fuel stop in Halifax becomes necessary under certain weather conditions, strong heat and wind. The spokesperson also wrote that the airline has tried delaying departing from Salt Lake City to eliminate the Halifax stop, but acknowledged that also means a later arrival in Frankfurt. The heat continues here across the state where we'll have heat warnings tomorrow plus fire warnings. And it shouldn't be a surprise to the airlines that it gets hot in Salt Lake City in July. I agree with you a thousand percent. Bill McGee is a licensed air dispatcher who advocates for flyers at the American Economic Liberties Project. Most of them don't want to don't want to bump passengers or not make more money carrying cargo. McGee says if enough passengers complain, the U.S. Department of Transportation could take action. I would suggest for any of your viewers that are experiencing this that they simply Google U.S. DOT passenger complaints and they could file a complaint about this. They have the power to step in and say, well, you're advertising a flight, but you're not operating it the way you're advertising it. Blair says his luggage arrived on the boat three and a half days after he and his wife. I'll never fly uh, Lufthansa or Eurowings. The Eurowings Discover flight flew again Monday, according to Flight Radar 24, all the way to Frankfurt, nonstop. At Salt Lake City International Airport, Nate Carlisle, Fox 13 News, Utah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, late this afternoon, tracking website said today's flight to Frankfurt was being diverted once again, this time to Toronto. A week after an e-bike accident in South Jordan killed one boy and injured another, we're hearing from the mother of the nine-year-old that continues to recover in the hospital. It's a very strong boy. Um, he is staying strong, I guess I could say. A new bill here on Capitol Hill to try to help with inflation. I'll tell you all about it. It is National French Friday, but in Utah, the holiday has to be a little different because Utah claims credit for the invention of fry sauce. We're going to look at that claim. Right now, a nine-year-old boy continues to recover in the hospital after he and his friend were hit while riding an e-bike in South Jordan last week. The other boy, nine-year-old Braden Long, died from his injuries last Thursday. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold spoke with the mother of Anthony Sandoval this afternoon, who says her son is staying strong after the accident. He's fighting. I can't say that. It's been a long week for Jamie Beach and their entire family. After her nine-year-old son, Anthony, was hit while riding an e-bike last week with his friend, Braden. Police say they were dragged 150 to 200 feet by the SUV that hit them while they were headed eastbound on 11400 South in South Jordan. He had a lot of um, abdominal injuries. He sustained a very severe major head trauma injury. Um, he is um, in recovery right now after his third surgery. Um, he is still in ICU. Beach says Anthony and Braden hadn't seen each other for months. So she says she dropped her son off at Braden's last Wednesday before heading back to their home in Magna. I got a phone call about an hour later that he had been um, hit by a motor vehicle. South Jordan police had to be on the phone with me to calm me down. Beach says Anthony and Braden were very good friends. I'm very saddened for his friend Braden that has passed and has lost his life. Now Beach and her family are trying to remain positive. Today is a hopeful day and I have very high hopes for him. Focusing not just on who her son is as a person. He's a very outgoing boy. Loves the outdoors. Um, loves the outdoors. Always outside playing basketball, playing soccer. Um, He's just really outdoorsy. But also the fight he has continued to show on his road to recovery. He did give us a thumbs up last night that he's 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 doing good. 
so that was a good sign. Well, the family tells me that once Anthony does get out of the hospital, they expect him to be in a wheelchair for about three months as he continues to recover. Now, as for where the investigation stands right now, I spoke with South Jordan police earlier today, and they said they have their lead investigator on this right now, trying to piece it all together on what caused this accident and if there'll be ramifications for the driver. In Salt Lake City, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah. The family says they're thankful for all the support they've been getting through this tough time, calling it unbelievable. A GoFundMe has been started for Anthony and his family. We have a link to that posted on our website right now, fox13now.com. Salt Lake City police have made an arrest in connection with a deadly fight outside a nightclub over the weekend. According to detectives, the suspect, Capuelli Penasini, sucker punched a man right outside Club Echo. Police say the assault happened during a street brawl. Their officers were trying to break up late Saturday night. The victim, 37-year-old Youssef Mohammed, suffered traumatic head and brain injuries and later died. Police found and arrested Penasini yesterday. This is at least the second large-scale violent incident to happen on Pierpont Street this year. When volatile situations start to happen, walk away. You know, we, we have a lot of people go, well, he looked at me wrong or, you know, said something. Those things don't hurt. Walk away. Penasini is facing one count of criminal homicide by assault. If there are any other witnesses out there with any additional information, please call Salt Lake City Police. Keep an eye out for this woman, 76-year-old Catherine Cushing Richardson. She was last seen yesterday afternoon driving away from the area of 34th West, 100 South. That's in South Jordan. According to the Silver Alert, she needs insulin and has other medical issues. Her car is a red 2011 Toyota Camry with license plate D860ES. If you see her or her car, please contact police. This is something brand new and it starts this Friday. Dialing 988 will connect you directly to the National Suicide Prevention and Mental Health Hotline. It is the result of legislation introduced by Utah Congressman Chris Stewart. The goal is to make dialing 988, if you or someone you know is considering suicide, as automatic as calling 911 if your home is on fire. With inflation still hitting people very, very hard, one Utah state lawmaker is now trying to push for a major tax change that she says will make it a little easier on your wallet. But as Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow shows us, it might face an uphill battle on Utah's Capitol Hill. And it's extremely important right now because with inflation, the rate that it is, people feel this every single time they go to the grocery store. They're reminded about the food tax. Representative Judy Weeks Rohner is taking another crack at repealing the state portion of the sales tax on food. She says it's overdue. We need to get it done. The people are saying, you know, we've got an increase in gas tax. We can't make our mortgage. We can't do our rent payment. It's a fight she and other lawmakers have fought in the past, but it's gone nowhere on Capitol Hill in the face of other tax proposals, including income tax cuts. House Republican leadership declined to comment on Representative Weeks Rohner's bill, but she says she's already met with Senate leaders. They're not um, for it, but if we contact the legislators, including senators and legislators, they can change their mind. It's the latest idea to battle the impacts of inflation in Utah. Governor Spencer Cox has supported the idea of temporarily making public transit free for Utahns, especially with high gas prices. But negotiations with House and Senate leaders have so far not advanced anything there, and Fox 13 News is told nothing is imminent. Because of how the state's constitution is set up, Utah cannot offer any kind of tax holiday to combat high gas prices. Before she was elected to the state house, Representative Weeks Rohner was a sponsor of a citizen referendum that successfully forced the legislature to repeal a massive tax overhaul bill they passed. She says Utahns can do it again. If we would have not done that referendum, you would have been paying 2%. 2.78% more on food tax and at least 10 cents more a gallon on gas. And that was without inflation. You take the inflation rate on that and it's mind boggling. We need to do something today to stop this, to help the people of Utah. Now, Representative Weeks Rohner has opened a bill file. That means she's running it, but it won't be considered until the full legislature meets in January.
on the Hill. Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. Honoring fallen veterans with a cross-country ride. The path this group of motorcyclists took that brought them to West Valley City. And Utahns visiting a new trailhead today, honoring a local environmental advocate who made a big difference preserving the state's natural beauty. Welcome back, everyone. Some motorcycle riders are on a cross-country ride to honor fallen veterans. Mm, quite the ceremony here. It's called the Memorial Torch Motorcycle Ride. It started in Oregon. It will end up at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. Today, the group stopped in West Valley City to honor Army Captain Corey Holmgren, who drowned three years ago. It's really, really special to be remembered some, with something like this. Um, they are just strangers to us, and yet we're connected in this love and desire to remember those fallen soldiers. It means a lot to me because I think about Corey all the time. And listen to this. The riders lit that flame you see on your screen. When they started the trip, they pull it the whole entire way. It will stay lit all the way to Arlington. Utahns gathered at the recently renovated Mount Olympus Trailhead today to honor the late environmental advocate, Dr. B. Gail Dick. Salt Lake County Parks and Recreation hosted a memorial plaque unveiling commemorating the doctor's lifelong preservation efforts. Before he passed in 2014, he was a professor at the University of Utah, an accomplished musician, and was instrumental in the establishment of Save Our Canyons. The leadership of Save Our Canyons is what I will remember most about me, and that's a living legacy that's continued by excellent leadership today as well. Yeah, there's no question that Gail loved the mountains adjacent to our community. He helped to organize Save Our Canyons in an effort to elevate the voices of others in the region about the importance of these mountains and work tirelessly to defend them. In addition to honoring Gail, Utahns were celebrating the improvements on the trailhead there is now more accessible parking and restroom facilities, as well as a redirected trailhead to increase safety and reduce erosion. Still ahead for National French Fry Day, we dig into the origins of fry sauce and what Utahns think of our culinary claim to fame. And it was a nice night for some comfort food as we are tracking some storms here across the state, still areas of thunderstorms. What you can expect for the rest of tonight and how you can stay safe tomorrow coming up. And coming up in sports, a couple of NASCAR drivers spent the day in Park City as if they were training for the Olympics. And RSL played in Atlanta tonight. Could they get a result on the road? The highlights are on the way. All right, it might not be prominent on your calendar, but today is National French Fry Day. I actually took part tonight. You because celebrated? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to mark my calendar. I don't for know next how year. great I feel because of it, but I definitely had French fries. Oh, tonight. they're so good. You know, of course, for a lot of us here in Utah, French fries need that extra kick of fry sauce. I made sure to have fry sauce. Yeah, how could you not, right? Fox 13 News anchor Max Roth has this in depth look at Utah's trademark condiment. Arctic Circle gets credit for originating fry sauce at their Salt Lake City restaurant sometime around 1950. Now, more than 70 years later, pretty much any burger joint in Utah either creates their own fry sauce or they have to be ready to hand out a lot of packets of mayo and ketchup. It's beyond just the normal boring ketchup and mayo and just it's that kind of unique Utah flavor. That was the idea that Don Carlos Edwards had when he and sons Ralph and JR mixed mayo, ketchup and some secret ingredients. They are a secret. We uh, we try to keep those uh, keep those close to our vest. One person has half the recipe in a, in a vault and, and I have another. So that's how we that's how we do it. You're kidding. Is that really true? No, I'm kidding. Since 1950, Arctic Circle has worked hard on their trademark shakes, burgers, and family deals. But their 70-some restaurants across the West are still known for those little packets they hand out for free. It's good. Arctic Circles are the best, I think. The Arctic Circle folks welcome their competitors' concoctions. Yes, as we, we lay claim to be the originators, I think the thing that's neat is to see what different restaurant groups have done over time. If you look at how Crown Burger does theirs or Hires does theirs, or even if you recall Training Table back in the day, um, where they had a very different take on what fry sauce is. I just like a, like a tangy, tanginess to it, not dull. 
something that's got a little zing behind it. Some claim earlier origins of the sauce in the form of Thousand Island dressing or a shrimp dip in Argentina called salsa golf. They may be similar, but fry sauce in whatever form is for fries. People are very protective of their fry sauce, whether it's Arctic Circles or someone else's that they that they enjoy. They're protective of that, and it's it's a fun thing to talk about. And on National French Fry Day, maybe it's time for the nation to acknowledge what Utahns have known for a long time. Fries deserve something better than ketchup. Joe with Arctic Circle says their restaurant in Newport, Oregon, sells more of these bottles of fry sauce than any other. It's a reminder, some folks live in places where fry sauce is hard to come by. In studio, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah. Okay, that's a holiday I can certainly get behind. Here's what I'm tracking for you tonight. Also, beautiful pictures coming in in our Facebook group. This one was so spectacular from Scott Taylor in Magna tonight that I couldn't even fit the entire thing on the screen. So just wonderful pictures in our Facebook group, Utah's Weather Authority. And we still have some thunderstorms here across northern Utah. Through Tooele County right now, moving through just south of I-80, north of Rush Valley, areas of rain. We did have a flash flood warning for the Stockton area that was allowed to expire four minutes ago at 945 that has not been reissued yet. So we're going to keep our eye on that in case we start seeing that creeping closer to the Jacob burn scar. As we look up towards the Wasatch back to south of I-80 between Park City and Evanston, a lot of moderate to heavier rainfall and a lot of lightning as well. Across southern Utah down towards Marysville, we are seeing a few storms. So tonight at 10 p.m., we're still going to keep that chance for thunderstorms, mainly in Tooele County and along the mountains of northeast Utah. We'll see some isolated thunderstorms tonight along the Wasatch Front as a possibility. Overnight temps around 75 to 80 will heat up tomorrow near 100 to 105 across the state with more thunderstorms. For tomorrow, excessive rain is possible from about Salt Lake County south. So basically point of the mountain further south is where we have that best chance, including up into Vernal in the Uinta Basin, some areas of heavy rainfall possible tomorrow. So the flash flood potential for tomorrow is probable for Capitol Reef, Grand Staircase, Natural Bridges, Grand Gulch, San Rafael Swell, and Zion. St. George, you're near 105 for much of your seven-day forecast, closer to 110 actually Saturday and Sunday. So we have a lot of heat to talk about for St. George. Here along the Wasatch Front, we have triple digits again tomorrow with 102 for a high. By Friday, 101 in Salt Lake. Air quality tomorrow moderate. By Friday, orange unhealthy for sensitive groups. By Saturday, 103 for a high. Sunday, still 103. Chance of rain here in Salt Lake will be isolated through your entire seven-day forecast, especially during the days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all isolated showers and thunderstorms is a possibility. By Monday, 100 degrees. By next Tuesday, 98. So how long is this going to last? As we look at our temperature outlook for days 8 to 14, this is the 21st of July through the 27th of July. So in week two, we're keeping things hot here across Utah and we'll keep you very warm through next Wednesday and then even beyond, as you just saw. Real Salt Lake played its first midweek match of the season tonight in Atlanta. RSL trying to avoid losing three straight on the road, but Atlanta got off to the great start. Through ball to Ronaldo Cisneros. Sets it up and scores. That put Atlanta 1-0 in the seventh minute. Then a giveaway by RSL. It's Cisneros once again. Shoots and scores. His first half brace put Atlanta up 2-0 in the 33rd minute. Arasa got one back just four minutes later. Justin Miram, just a great ball into uh, Johan Kappelhoff. He heads it in for his first goal in Major League Soccer, but that was it for RSL. Atlanta won it 2-1. Next up, RSL hosts Sporting Kansas City on Sunday. Jazz owners Ryan Smith, Dwayne Wade, along with David Fisdale, the new associate GM, watching the Jazz Summer League play Toronto. Jared Butler steps back, hits the three, but he was only two of eight from long range at 12 points, six assists. Here's one of those assists to Leandro Balmero. Lays in two of his 11 points. Now with this effort from Kofi Coburn. Six with it, then throws it down. But the Raptors won at 80-74, dropping the Jazz to two and one in Las Vegas. Match play is underway at the Utah State Amateur Stroke Play. 
Medalist Zach Jones is the number one seed. He took on 2007 State Am champion Nick Nilsson in the round of 64 at Soldier Hollow. Jones, the BYU sophomore, took a three-up lead through seven holes, went on to win the match five and four. He'll play Jacob Wagstaff in the round of 32 tomorrow. The championship match will be played on Saturday. It's not often you see a couple of NASCAR drivers in Utah, but thanks to Toyota, Denny Hamlin and Bubba Wallace were up in Park City today to hang out with some local winter sports stars. The day started at Olympic Park with bobsled runs before moving over to the USANA Center of Excellence, which is the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association's national training ground and educational facility. Hamlin was currently sixth in NASCAR Cup standings was there, but an illness had him held him back from participating. Different story for Wallace. How about that? Get right in there. Everything from jumping on the trampoline foam pit to the ski jump simulator. A chance for athletes of two different sports to come together and learn from one another. It's a mindset going into it, right? These guys come here, they're all looking at us like, what in the world's going on? While they're honing in on their craft, trying to be better. And so I respect them for what they do and how they represent you know, our country. A lot of Olympic athletes here and and it's, uh, it's pretty damn special. We'll have more on that story Sunday on the Fox 13 Sports page. We'll be right back. And what would want to eat a Steeler Sealand? Shark! It's Shark! <laughs> Utah's Hogle Zookeepers are sharing their heartfelt meanings behind their tattoos. Animal caretakers like Supervisor Melanie Koos says she has eight tattoos, all of which are of animals that have inspired her throughout her career. And others like Austin tell Fox 13 News these animals are more than a job. This is a little bit more than a job. It's definitely a passion. And all these animals make a huge impact in our lives. And some of us keepers really like to carry those animals on our sleeve with us throughout the remainder of our life. And it's awesome that Utah's Hogel Zoo is allowing us to celebrate that tonight. This was part of their Zoo Brew series for visitors 21 and up. Wow, the keepers keep the animals there That's on their right body. There. Thanks everyone for being with us tonight. Quick cast is coming up next. We'll see you then.